Hey there, cats and kitties. I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues. And with this video, we'll be discussing my thoughts on episode 16 of the anime series Arslan Senki, or the heroic legend of Arslan. And this episode was all kinds of madcap. I was literally on the edge of my seat, gritting my teeth, because as you open this episode, we're talking Gadibi's 150,000 troops going up against Arslan and Rajendra's respective 60,000. Uh, that's split between them both. You know, the Persian forces match about 10,000. I think, uh, you know, Rajendra's got 50. And you're talking about just Gadibi having 150 troops, not even answering to the fact that he's also got a whole crap ton of these, air quotes, war elephants. You open this episode and it's like, how can you even conceive of it not being anything less than a landslide against Arslan's whole cause, his effort? And it's quite intriguing to see how it all plays out. Of course, the first aspect of the episode calls right back to uh, Jeswant, who is being reprimanded. He's about to lose his own head for the failure of stopping Arslan. Uh, you know, they took over and occupied that entire kingdom and uh, sent all the sort of officials packing, everyone scurrying, uh, who wasn't killed in the onslaught and everything like that. And, um, you know, Jeswant, he, he went crawling back home in a sense, but it's a failure of the utmost renown that Gadibi will not swallow. He, he's fighting very unpalatable, and he wants this sucker's head. And you have this mentor uh, sort of father figure of Jeswant, uh, I think the cat's name is Mahendra, um, basically doing what we saw sort of early in the series when Variz very much had to go to task uh, for Androgoras not to punish Daryun too severely just before Variz asked Daryun to, you know, look after Arslan the man, you know, not the kingdom and all that stuff and the hierarchy. And I love that because there are so many different, <laughs> you know, all these characters are cut from the same cloth. There are so many different parallels. Uh, you're talking, you know, the idea that here we have Jaswant, who is a man who doesn't know who his parentage was. That falls in line with Arslan. He's got a mentor who's sticking his neck out for him, kind of akin to what uh, Daryun does for Arslan. You have uh, just that whole idea of, you know, the brothers, the cascade between the two Sindarin factions, Rajendra and Gadivi respectively, matching very much as Narciss and Daryun, you know, sort of uh, just talking about on a whim how much, how closely it resembles what's going on between Arslan and Hedemus for the Parsian, uh, you know, crown effectively. And all of these things, of course, are aware to the viewer, but it's, it's just interesting and, and captivating to hear it finally being put into words and seeing all these parallels being drawn out. Now, as these factions finally enter the battlefield, of course, we do get a few clips uh, back where, you know, Arslan's posse is located, and Narciss is kind of, you know, doling out what he expects Gadibi's forces to do. They don't need to utilize their entire 150,000 troops and their war elephants to go one way or the other. Uh, on the battlefield, they will be surrounded. Arslan's faction on one side with the Parjan army and then Rajendra's faction of Sindurans on the other side. And all really Gadibi needs to do is walk right in the middle, sort of uh, saunter up in the middle, send his factions left and right, and he just sit there without batting an eye and watch them be annihilated because of the sheer, you know, numbers that he represents. And, of course, it does end up, uh, you know, necessitating the use of the war elephants, actually, because of the river had that sort of in between them and the soldiers themselves are getting lost and they can't quite cross it and everything. And they're keeping the troops away from each other. And this is something logistical that was probably in the planning stages, as Rajendra notes, from Narciss himself. Now, what's very intriguing is once you have those elephants thrown into the mix, I mean, they are just pancaking anything in their path. They're super normally powerful, uh, like, you know, locomotive trains that are unstoppable because they've been drugged up. Rajendra even says, you know, in this colder weather, they shouldn't be as uh, agile as they are. And one of his men notes, well, they must be using drugs to have them so super powerful. And we're just seeing the landslide in effect. <laughs> you know, uh, Rajendra's people being out for the count. Because, of course, Arslan's faction has been, he gets word that they are surrounded back where they are, and they're not going to make it. Uh, it looks like Rajendra has to give up. I mean, he's very much to that point where he's got to surrender or, you know, uh, 
order retreat for his men because he led his men here and he feels very much strongly about that and uh, you know the fatigue of bringing them to their own disaster it seems to really affect him um, and at this moment <laughs> here comes Arslan and the Parsian forces they completely duped the Sindarin faction that went after them surrounded the kingdom and everything <laughs> they got all these like wooden dummies tongue out and everything <laughs> Just absolutely brilliant because Narciss planned this all. He knew exactly what Khadivi was going to do. They used the time, uh, and we only see fleeting glimpses where the Persian army were at work, and you don't know what they're doing. But apparently, they're building these dummies, they're building, uh, you know, equipment that they can utilize against these war elephants. Which, holy crap! <laughs> you know, you got. Everybody in the mix. You got Daryun in there, you got Farangis, you got Giv. Everybody's in the mix. And they end up effectively leading the war elephants across the battlefield into an ambush. And, like, literally, there's bushes everywhere. <laughs> I mean, all of a sudden, these giant, you know, I, I mean, uh, Narciss or whoever calls it these giant arrows, but they're like harpoons and they have poison tips and they are launching these things hundreds at a time from these like uh, wooden sort of vehicles. I don't know what you call them, but uh, almost like wooden tanks and they're just launching at these elephants. They are wiping out the elephant as a cascade, much as the elephants did pancaking everyone earlier. And I was just like, oh, sh damn. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like seeing that completely gobsmacked at this level of being able to think that far ahead and strategy and all this stuff that Narciss put into action. And uh, of course, Elam was the cat who was ordering the firing of these giant like harpoon arrows and everything. And it gets literally to the point where you have a face off. Everything is left with a face off between Daryun on horseback and Gadibi, who has now, you know, decided to enter the fray on elephant back, as it were. And because they both use chiefly, uh, you know, sort of a spear weapon, he wants to take Daryun on. Daryun knocks him on his ass within seconds. And then, <laughs> adding insult to injury of the sort of having to, uh, you know, put, cast your disbelief aside, um, here you have Jezwan trying to make up for his previous failure by jumping his damn horse up on top of this giant elephant to grab <laughs> effectively Kadivi, hoist him up on top of the horse, and off they ride. Now, at this point, you have Ferengis getting ready an arrow to take him out, and Arzen once again tells her not to, and she makes a comment that's very apropos to, of course, the OP, where we see that, uh, you know, Jezwant is part of this faction, but she says, basically, hopefully he will be grateful, because this is the second time you let him walk away with his life. And um, surely he's already thinking about this, because uh, he's very much thinking in internally about, and he actually speaks aloud a bit about it, too, um, that, you you know, in comparing Gadivi to Arslan, Gadivi's all selfish. He's all about himself. Uh, the people under him are just slaves to whatever task he sees fit, whereas Arslan and the people around him are unified, are working together, they're caring and concerned about each other, and uh, they're like a family, <laughs> essentially. And it's very much, you know, sort of at the crux of his mind. I would not be at all surprised, because, of course, how we leave this, uh, the father of Rajendra and Gadivi awakens from whatever his, you know, his illness is, and Gadivi lets it be known that Rajendra is trying to usurp the throne. Uh, there hasn't been any declared, you know, heir to the throne. So we see he's pleading with his own father, uh, that is to say, Gadivi, you know, be the deciding factor. Cast out a call to who will be the heir to the throne. Uh, let it be me, you know, bring, bring Rajendra in and punish him for his going against our own people and all this stuff. And the father, you know, he's in bed, he pulls his hand away, and he's just like, you know, I'm so sick of you two fighting, your mealy mouth, competitorship, uh, this is just another one of your stupid games. No, the deciding factor will be the duel before the gods. A one-on-one, -on -one, mano a mano, to the death match between brothers. And as if that weren't tantamount enough, 
because of everything, you know, riding on this for Arslan's cause to have the Sindarin army backing him to go back up against uh, Silver Mask, you know, Hermes and the Lusitanians. If that hasn't all fallen apart in the time this is taking place and, uh, you know, needs to happen and unfold, you know, basically we have Rajendra begging and pleading Arslan to let Daryun be the person who fights for him. Reminds me back of a, a mock time from Star Trek where you had Kirk having to fight his own crewman, Spock, because um, he had the heats and the woman didn't want him. <laughs> you know, whatever like that. But um, I digress. In effect, I mean, I could almost begin to see, because it, it looks like from the preview for the next episode that Daryun will be in the heat of this battle, and I didn't want to pause it or spoil it too much for myself. I began to speculate, though, how might a character like Jez Want be able to attain some level of notoriety in the Sindarin forces? That is, if he doesn't defect entirely over to Arslan's Parsian side, um, could he represent somebody who will ascend the throne in the place of one of these two brothers? With how squirrely Gadivi is, I would not be at all surprised to have him choose Jeswant as his sort of, uh, you know, beneficiary in this battle, much as Rajendra is begging for Daryun to be, and it seems as though it's going to be the case that Daryun will be fighting for him. And it looks like Arslan wants to just chew his head off as a result. But I mean, damn, this whole episode just threw me for a loop in the sheer shock factor of the numbers, you know, of these factions, one versus the other. There was this just sheer amount of insane, you know, again, 150,000 plus war elephants. And yet they lost because of using all of those different elements uh, that we've heard Narciss talking about, you know, the battlefield, the weather, uh, the seasons, all these different things, knowing the terrain. And even though they were probably not as familiar with the terrain, they still became familiar enough with it to utilize it to their own benefits and sent Gadivi packing with all this sheer amount of force behind him. They send him back, tail tucked between his legs. And, um, I mean, I could argue basically as a viewer, there is some level of suspension of disbelief that is necessary almost in certain aspects of it. But it was still pretty much a wowed episode, like a wowing episode for me, um, just because I didn't know how it was going to play out. I was almost half suspecting, you know, uh, Gadivi to wipe out Regendra's forces and then go and try to be all chummy with Arslan or something, you know, somehow the tide to turn in that frame of reference, uh, not with Gadivi walking off the battlefield, the loser. I definitely never expected that. And um, just an exciting episode all around, really, uh, at least for me. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below, uh, you know, basically what you thought of episode 16 of Arslan Senki, if you've seen it, and this entirety of this battle that just went 180 degree turn from how it probably should have gone. With all the characters in play, with all the war elements, the soldiers, the sheer number of forces under, uh, you know, Gadivi's faction, and all of these twists and turns and, uh, you know, utilizing that ground, that battleground, to the utmost benefit that uh, Narciss put into the planning and just came out the winner, man. Some crazy stuff, <laughs> you know, so as I say, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below and otherwise that'll be pretty much it for me on this. Hope this video finds you well. And I'll catch y'all later. Peace.